Cool. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the X Ring. So I'm here at the Night Force booth at Shot Show 2024. I've got Carlos. You guys have seen him on the videos before. I think you've been helping me at Shot Show for three or four years now. Yeah. At least. Yeah, number six now. <laughs> yeah. So what we've got is the new spotting skill by Night Force. We're going to have Carlos tell us all about it, price point, and why it's here. Yeah, thanks for coming by, Ray. Always good to see you. This is our 6 to 36 by 50 first focal plane configurable field spotting scope. So in its configuration now, it just features a couple of the basic features that you would expect in a spotting scope. And then we can touch on that in a minute. But then as you see behind me, you can do all sorts of crazy madness with it, putting enablers, red dots, anything you want on there. So let's talk about some of the basics. It ships from the factory with Tenbrex flip caps like you see on our ATAC R's and NX8s. It has a little bit of a hidden feature right here. It's an adjustable eye cup. Diopter adjustment is here. Magnification six to 36, first focal plane. We do have three reticles available. This is a, one of my favorite features. It's a 120 degree throw for your, uh, for your focus. Uh, 50 millimeter objective. We do have a real right stuff Arca uh, dovetail on the bottom. Plenty of room. You can even mount an accessory rail like so. You can mount one forward and backward. Reason being, forward is for your enablers, your night vision, your thermal. You can also run one in the back if you wanted to run an inline camera to record your feed or anything like that. We're super excited about this. It's ultra configurable. It's less than 30, uh, it's 33.7 ounces out of the box like you see here, and then configures to a much higher weights than that. So pretty excited about it. What do you what, think? What is the price point of it? Price point, as you see here, is $29.50. Okay. With the accessory cage and the rail, it goes for $3,100. Okay. One of the things I do like about it, and you guys will probably know this, whether you're shooting a PRS match or you're doing a rug style match, the size. Right. And this is the smallest spotting scope right. that I've really seen. It looks like a scope. This was really easy to operate when I was playing mm -hmm. with it earlier. Um, are there any type of soft cases or any type of protective things for this? We are shipping it with a soft case. It okay. is padded, Night Force. It's like a green and khaki branded Night Force okay. case. And it does have Velcro straps in there so it doesn't go flopping around inside the case. Yeah. Also inside the case is a sleeve that you can store your rail so you're not scratching the finish on your body. Yeah. Well, I'm really impressed with it, and you guys might say, well, why are you impressed with it? Well, I like the zoom range, having that mm -hmm. 6, and now it enables you to use it with enablers. Absolutely. And it also has the 36 at the top end, so you're going to be able to do all your spotting, everything you need to mm -hmm. do. So if you needed a bigger field of view, let's say you're being an RO for the day yep, or whatever. Yep, exactly. Uh, you can do all of that. So really good job on that. Carlos, thanks for walking us through it. Absolutely. I appreciate your time. Pleasure to see you. Thank you. Likewise. Let's go on to the next one, guys. All right, so the one that we've been waiting for, you guys have been requesting it, and that is an interview with Accuracy International about the ATXC and the new lineup for 2024. Uh, I have the pleasure of having Scott Sigmund here, who is the Vice President of Accuracy International in the United States. Scott, thank you for taking the time to explain what all you've got for 2024. Happy to do it, right? My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, anytime. So what, uh, what is the ATXC, and how is it different than the ATX? So... Uh, there are two main differences. One is simply how we're selling it packaged up now. Okay. Uh, we introduced a rifle and we were really trying to target a competitive price point and then offer all of the accessories as add-on options. Okay. And what we've learned in the last three years is everybody buys all of the stuff anyway and you know, then there's a hinge isn't available yet or the bridge is not yes, the right color so we said right we're just going to package the whole thing up and roll it up and okay. offer it all built bag rider hinge bridge full length top rail it's got everything on it okay. of course a customer if they if they want to lighten the gun up for like nrl hunter can remove this you can put a half bridge on you can put a carbon barrel on it uh, but we, you know, just listening to customers, we we packaged it up with all the options, and they yep. just slide out of the box ready to go. You know, the other big feature change is the action that down here. This this is the legacy action that okay. we've made for decades. Yes, sir. 
and this is the new one. Now they look a lot the same, but if you look closely, this looks like a baby AXSR, and it's the gun we developed for the SOCOM ASR program, and we did a lot of a lot of updates on the Magnum action. And what we've done is brought a lot of those features into this action to bring it into alignment. That makes now the short action, the Magnum action, and the AX50 all very much the same architecturally and feature-wise. So uh, we paid a lot of attention to operating forces because a lot of guys are using these guns in competition. So we redesigned the geometry of the lugs. Okay. So this bolt does not go in this action and vice versa. And the lugs have a larger bearing and shear area now, so it's stronger. Um, and we've eliminated little sort of friction points like the detent in the rear of the bolt where the caulking piece engages. Yes, sir. That's gone just like what we did on this action. Uh, we have refined the <clears throat> manufacturing process on how we finish the receiver bore, the bolt body. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> all of the closing camming action is up in the breech ring now. There, n none of it happens back here in the bolt slot. So, so the closing and opening on this are really a, a big move okay. in terms of operating force. Now let me stop you there for yes, just sir. a minute. Does that mean that if if someone has an ATX, that that barrel won't work because of the way that it locks up, or all no, that's the, going to be the same. No, the, the everything from the thread forward is the same. Same, now, same. Now this action adds the the gas ports like we have on the Magnum and, and the 50. Yes, sir. These are just soft rubber plugs, and that that port is right at the interface of the barrel. Yes, sir. And the face of the bolt. So if you have an overpressure, overpressure. event and a oh. big gas blowout the, the plugs just pop out and you've got these large ports on either side so the gas the gas goes out here instead of coming back here got it so like on the ATA on the 50 that's what that big red plug is that's right and so this over pressure situation. right those things work uh, okay. unbelievably well and uh, uh, I'm sure you've seen guns that have had a case head failure, and yes, it can sir. be pretty ugly. You have mags blowing out and Pressure particles going everywhere. And um, even when we've done failure testing and development of these actions, we've we've never lost a case head, and uh, we we've, we've had to actually simulate a situation where you have a case head separation to test this feature of the action where they actually you blow a case head off, okay. like where we have a barrel screwed out enough that you're gonna lose yeah, the case exactly. head. And how you know have to lengthen a firing pin to yes, ignite the round. So so it's a big a big feature um, safety feature enhancement. And um, like like the Magnum, we, we have another pair of screws on the front, so there's uh, four action screws up here, and we still retain the two in the rear, so you know, we still have the quick change barrel feature, but this okay. thing is really tied down to that chassis. And it, we didn't really need the additional pair, but yes, it, because of the way we had to machine this out, we, we decided to just replicate what we did on the big gun. Yes, sir. This has like been absolutely reliable and we wanted to bring that architecture into the short action. It is also a quarter of a pound lighter. So okay. if you look at it, there's there's some material missing here that you know, if you look at the way this is machined yes, sir. I see and that. cut away, a uh, quarter of a pound's a big move. And I think, you know, on uh, me and uh, my team guys, we've kind of gotten into the NRL Hunter series. Okay. So your whole rig, as you know, has to make 16 pound weight limit. Okay. And a quarter pound is a big move when you're trying to find, you know, where, where's that last couple of ounces? Yeah, a little bit going to come from. You know, and, and they like running those big bipods on the front, you know, with a huge yep. leg extension. And they're heavy. Uh, but Rhett, uh, Rhett Walter's gun recently, we put a Bartland Carbon 24-inch barrel on it. He was underweight with a suppressor and a half bridge wow. on it. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah, the other so. thing that stands out is this larger bolt knob, and yeah. you're not yes, going to find it on anything else. So yeah. what was the reason for that? Just speed or what? Um, 
speed and, and just ergonomics. Uh, right. I'll tell you where this came from is I have, a, I think it's a 1996 AI target rifle. Yes, sir. I have two of them. And the target guns had these big, like, 32 millimeter knobs on All it. Right. And I brought it out with the guys to shoot. You know, they, you know, a lot of people have never seen those old target guns, yep. and they really liked the knob. And they were like, "Why can't we have this?" I'm like, "Well, we can." So, so we did a lot of testing on different diameter knobs, and we decided the 32 millimeter, like okay. we used to put on the target guns, was kind of the ideal size. Yes, sir. So the ATXC will come with a bigger knob, uh, as you noted. We'll, we'll retain the standard knob on the more duty-oriented okay. guns just for compactness. And so I guess these are going to be delivered to like your optic mile high, your normal distributors that you had for the Yes, we've, we've already dealers. taken orders and we are producing them now. Okay. Uh, price point on the ATXC? Uh, Retail on this, I think, is about sixty-four fifty. Okay. Full MSRP. All right. Which, if, you know, if you add up all the, the accessories accessories that go to it and everything, it's pretty similar to you know where you would end up with, uh, with ATX. Yeah. The, okay. Under the old uh, structure. All right. Well, yeah. anything else you can think of, or is that pretty much it as far as the differences? And if someone has an ATX, mm -hmm. is there any? What would be the upsell to move to an ATXC if they already have an ATX? And I'm just wondering because I'm that guy. Well, if you know, if you want the ultimate in action operating smoothness, yes, uh, you would probably want to move to this guy. Okay. Yeah. So it is going to be a little bit smoother or a quarter pound lighter. You have a larger mm -hmm. bolt knob. It's going to have all the accessories with it. Price yep. point just a little under sixty five hundred. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and any future. Uh, you know, enhancements we do or, or models that we add to this lineup will be based on this action. Okay. And just to use an example, when we offer like a magnum bolt okay. replacement bolt for this, it will be on this architecture, not this one. Right, so delivery of this, uh, just to be clear, we're saying late March for sure? Yes, we expect to start shipping to the distributors here in the U.S. Uh, at the end of March. End of March. Yeah. And so I'm sure with all the pre-orders, most of those are probably already spoken for, aren't they? Uh, I don't know. On, on the retail side, I, I don't know. But yes, I, I think there's going to be a lot of, like, <laughs> just rapid turnover. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's a yeah. great product. Well, Scott, I appreciate your time. I know it's really busy here at SHOT Show, and yeah. uh, thank you for taking the time to do the interview yeah. and explain the differences, and I uh, hope you have a good rest of your week. Thank you, Ray. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate okay. it. I'm here with Jeff Spaulding at Caracol. You guys remember when I did the full plant tour in Caracol at the UAE facility in the United Arab Emirates. That's actually where I first met you, Jeff. That's right. Absolutely right. So it is an honor to actually be here and be able to go over the firearms because now I get to see them here in the United States. Yeah, for sure. And so I didn't know if you wanted to talk about some of the models. Tell us what's going to be available this year and yes. any new launches. Yeah, absolutely. So our, our new product, big product release for this year is two products. We have the Caracal CMP9, CMP9K. Yes, sir. It's a, a nine inch and a six inch version of the Caracal CMP9. Uh, the original design and engineering of the CMP is a machine pistol, a replacement product for the HK MP5. Okay. Uh, and it's gotten some really good traction and, and made some really good sales in the, in the government and the defense market space. Yes, sir. So we decided to uh, bring that to the commercial market in a semi-auto format, uh, which is what you see here, which is the Caracal CMP9. This here is the nine inch. This is how they'll be shipping to our customers. We already have this one open, so I can show you. Correct. So this is the nine inch barrel. It comes with an M-lock hand guard, 1913 rail on the back, so you can attach whatever brace or buttstock or PDW or, or any type of attachment you want in the back there. Uh, it's fully ambidextrous controls, mm -hmm. boat catch, boat release, magazine release, selectors. It accepts any standard AR style grip. Obviously we use our Caracal grip. Correct, which I actually touched on because you guys we're doing the injection molding there. Yep. Now, I was really impressed with the CMP9. I'm going to yeah. go ahead and pull this out slightly. Guys, when you look at this, this is their own design. So this is not going to be like an MPX. This is actually going to be a straight blowback design. Yep. It actually disassembles very quickly. You have a quick change handguard that just slides on with a dovetail. 
you have a dual recoil spring, but these shot very soft. They were very, very accurate when we did it. You guys remember it on the video itself. Absolutely. And then on the upper here, you have a standard little charging handle that fits in the little keyway. And then once you take down that front takedown pin, you didn't know you were gonna get dirty on this. It's all then, good. Then the handguard just slides off the front. Absolutely. The pivot pin actually retains the handguard. Yep. Along with these to two channels for securing it. And then we have our key lock that ties into the upper rail as well. Yeah, so do you know what the threading is gonna be? Because I know a lot of guys are gonna want to run cans on this. or Yeah, we're gonna run adapters. standard pistol caliber threads. It's okay. gonna be uh, like I have metric threads, yep. Or as metric, so yep. 13 and a half by yep. one. Yep. Okay, not a problem. And like you said, these will ship as pistols, but they Correct. could use something. These have, I think have Strike Industries on them. Yep. Um, and these would be considered pistols, of course. Yes, this is the Strike Industries brace. Uh, and the reason we chose the Strike for the display is because with the all the, as ambidextrous as the rifle is, the fact that we can fold the Strike either in way. either direction just <laughs> yes, kind of made sense to show that off. But uh, yeah, we're really happy with the product. We love the CMP9. And like you said, it, it's a dream to shoot. Yep. It's uh, an inexpensive entrance into this market space for something of this quality. You know, there's, you're not going to see any plastic other than the handguard. I mean, other than the pistol grip. Everything's machined from our forgings of uh, 7075. So it's okay, nice. Uh, everything is built to be as durable as possible. Price point. MSRP on this is 1525 1525 Well, you guys know I love the subguns. There's something I like a little more than the subguns, and those are the precision rifles. So what we're going to do is step over here to the CSR series. Absolutely. All right, so guys, this is the CSR. We have two different variations here. You have one in a 308, and then you have one in a 338 Lapua. I did have the opportunity to shoot both of these yep. quite quite at length uh, when I was in the UAE. <laughs> we did spend and, some time and, I, with them. and I enjoyed them very, very much, uh, along with some other firearms that were on there that aren't here stateside. Yeah. So these are made in the UAE as well. That's correct. Yep. Okay. And so this one's in 308, guys. This is the C uh, the CSR. It's the 308. I think price point on this is going to be around 38 or somewhere at 37. Yep. 37. There. And yep. so, guys, it is a phenomenal action. It works really well. You have a folding stock. Uh, that actually locks into position, yep. so it's not going to flop around. It does block the uh, bolts itself from lifting once you fold it over. And on the 338 at Lapua, you are stepping up in price like you do with your Magnums, and I believe it's going to be like 6700 6700 yes, sir. Yeah, th this was phenomenal, guys. I did shoot these quite a bit, and it was very, very impressive. Um, I just hate, I don't see the suppressor on here that was available in the UAE. I know. Is that going to come We're trying. Side? We're trying. Okay, awesome. Anything you want to add about the CSR Yeah, models? absolutely. So there's some, some key features on these, a little bit different. So there's no, at no point during the barrel to bolt interface does it shoulder to the receiver. Okay. So this barrel threads directly into a barrel extension within the receiver, and then we have a timing ring, and then we have the locking rings. Okay. So all of the mating and head spacing and timing is done in that timing ring. So it's essentially a tube gun all the way through, which is how we get that ridiculous amount of accuracy that yes, we saw. Yes, and they were really extremely accurate. When that when this was this was the first uh, batch we got for sample in the U.S. I took out and shot a five-round group after zeroing it and after running it over the chrono to get some numbers. First five-round group I shot, 0.1 MOA. Yeah. I walked it out to a thousand, walked it back in, shot another group, 0.17. Yeah. So I, I was I don't blown doubt. away. It was incredible how they shot. Uh, this is going to be a little probably off base for you, but I noticed when I was over there and yeah. even here, yeah. we have a little break between the handguard and the receiver. Is yep. this for thermal expansion? Is there a yep. reason so why? So like I was is? saying, it doesn't. we don't have any shouldering anywhere in there. So okay. everything is done in that barrel to ring to extension interchange. Okay. So in order to keep that, the heat from affecting, we can run long strings of fire and still maintain ridiculous amounts of accuracy okay. because we're not dealing with different materials and the metals Yes, sir, with absolutely. Expansion. Um, all of these are going to be, is it a 60 degree? 60 degree, three lug, dual, okay. uh, dual ejector, uh, tool steel extractor. Uh, they are, again, like every other car product, they're designed and overbuilt to, to perform in the worst conditions imaginable and be able to do it, uh, even bore obstruction okay. on a 338 Lapua. So it's, they, uh, they are definitely built. And just for the viewers so that they know and to answer any questions. Of course. So all these are going to be basically gone through to the CIP proof house before they come to the States, or does that Absolutely. change? Absolutely. Nope, okay. it's all done exactly the same. Nothing. Awesome. We can't finish a rifle there or a pistol there until it's been through the CIP proof house. Okay. Anything and, else about these? Yeah, we have a patented buttstock on them, which I'll just run through really quick because yes. I think it's really No tools. Silly. It was great. Absolutely no tools. It's all designed to be done from the final firing position with the shooter. 
So if I'm in my position and I need to adjust my cheek riser, there's a trigger located right here to be done with the support side hand. Press the trigger, it's all spring loaded. We have about eighth inch increments. I can lock back in right there where I want to be. If length of pull is wrong, I can adjust four positions of length of pull, relock that. And if I need rear support, I have an integral monopod that gives me gross adjustment as well as fine adjustment. And if I wanted to run a mounted bag slider or mount a tripod for rear support, pull the bag slider off. We have a section of 1913 rail on the back there. And the butt pad is easily adjustable up and down. All again, all designed to be meant to be manipulated from the final firing position. Yeah, I was very impressed with the butt stock and the adjustments when I was there. I actually highlighted that when I was in the UAE. And thanks again for having me over there. Of course. You guys, there is one other thing I want to talk about, and that is going to be the 816. Um, we're not going to talk about the 416 or the 716. No, that is the 814. That's the our direct 814. engagement line. Too many numbers, I can't remember. Um, Direct impingement line, sure it's a great rifle, but I don't want this video to be too long because yeah. I definitely want to cover that 816 over here, so let's go check it out. All right guys, so this is the 816. I did shoot this in the UAE. Uh, I have a lot of familiarity with the HK416 quite a bit because I carried one for work. And Jeff, why don't you tell us kind of how this project is because it is not an HK416. No, it's completely redesigned. Absolutely it is. So it does hold lineage with the HK416, as okay. you're aware. The original engineers uh, in HK, the, some of the members on that team, then went to uh, an American company here and developed okay. a, a similar product that ended in 16 as well. I remember. Uh, those engineers, the, the lead engineer as well as the HK engineer, uh, then came to Caracal International. Okay. And we developed, uh, developed the CAR 816. And it was essentially the third iteration of that short stroke gas piston system. Okay. And uh, it's been hugely successful uh, in, in hundreds of military trials around the world. Okay. Uh, gaining contracts with some of the most renowned and respected special forces teams and militaries uh, in the world. Uh, and it's designed, again, just like every other Caracar product, with exception of our sporting only, our Versus lines, to be uh, qualified to the US TOPs for light arms and shoulder fire weapon systems, the NATO AC-225s, including over the beach, destructive testing, bore obstructions. I can fill the bore with axle grease and fire live rounds. I can fill it with sand, mud, even solid projectiles, fire live rounds through it, and the gun continues to run. Yeah. No, no pressure gets back into the receiver, and that's done by some proprietary changes to the, the chamber lead-ins and the chamber supports, as well as the barrel extension and our bolts and our extractors and the way that it's been designed. Uh, but One of the things tanks. I want to ask on, I'm not sorry to interrupt, no but worries. I know that everything we covered so far, those are made in the UAE. Correct. My understanding is these are not. These are made in the USA. These are made in the United States. So in the, Idaho. The 816, the 814, okay. as well as our enhanced F striker fired pistols, they're all made in Nampa, Idaho. Yes. Okay. All right, and so, so guys, what we're talking about with the short stroke piston, uh, you don't have to take the handguard off like you do on an HK416 to surface it or anything. You're basically going to push the button. You're going to rotate it 180 degrees. You pull it out. It's all contained in the rod. You can then separate the rod itself. So you have your, your gas rings here, and you're going to have three settings, basically. You've got your normal, you've got your adverse, and you've got suppressed. When you shoot it in suppressed, you do have to press the plunger again so that you know the difference when you're firing it, but it's a very simple system, fixed hand guard. Uh, you could take the hand guard off by removing two set screws, from what I understand. Yep, these two helicoils right here, that's all that's holding that on. But unless you're trying to just wipe the barrel down, there's really no reason to do that. And guys, right. these were extremely effective uh, when I was shooting, super accurate. Um, is this a DLC bolt? coated bolt or do you know what coating that is in the bolt? Uh, the bolt is just QPQ. Okay, QPQ? Yep, it's QPQ and the bolt itself, the, the carrier is QPQ, chrome lined, uh, but the bolt itself is 158 Carpenter. Okay. Uh, we only have two suppliers of that bolt that have are, are qualified uh, to supply the 158 Carpenters to us because they've been through the validation testing for the bore obstruction and the destructive okay. testing. There's not a component on the rifle that hasn't passed that test. Okay. Nothing gets changed on the bomb unless it can meet the standards. 
All right, guys, so it might be in bad taste to start skipping guns, but there are a lot of guns in Paracol. <laughs> uh, so one of the other ones that I do want to cover is the Lynx series, and basically this is going to be a double stack 9mm. Yep. And so this is something new well, for you guys, right? It's a 9mm, 38 Super Auto, or okay. 40 Smith & Wesson. Awesome. So it's available in all calibers. We have our 5-inch, 4-inch. This is the Lynx DSC. Okay. And then we have our open gun, which is the Lynx DS Versus. Again, that verse is denoting all of our competition products. Uh, but it is a double stack pistol. It's all alloy framed, uh, three piece design, super smooth. You know, it's a production gun. We do hundreds of these a month. Okay. But they're all hand fit and finished during the assembly process. You can feel them, they are smooth as butter. They're, it w operates on a modified Colt short action recoil system. Okay. With a single locking lug and a flat top barrel. So with that flat top barrel, what that allows us to do is if you'll notice, we can keep that bore height or the slide height down right above the top of the bore, bringing first your line of sight overboard down low, but also reducing any mass that's over that recoil axis to provide for much softer felt recoil. And inside of this, you'll see we have a captured recoil spring that operates on this bushing. And with a takedown tool, or a paper clip. Or a paper clip <laughs> if you need it in a jiffy. Remove that. And you'll notice on the bushing here itself, we have a timing stake. Okay. And that's what's going to retain our barrel bushing, which just threads in. Also, it does have a barrel bushing. It does have a barrel is bushing. Is it solid brass on this bushing? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I noticed when I picked it up, some of the things that stood out was the balance on it. Absolutely. We're also not using a polymer uh, yep. grip panel. You're, like you said, it's full metal construction. So there's our flat top barrel, single locking lug and recoil. And guys, what are you talking about that flat top? If you look right across the top of this profile, you'll notice on most of your your double stack 9mm 40s and all of that, this will be much higher. So yep. it just gets that a little lower. You also have uh, basically an accurizing on the end of the barrel for the bushing itself. Correct. Just to kind of center everything up. But very and impressive. When that barrel is locked home, you see we have no gap, there's no intrusion. We can load soft lead, we can load flat nose, we can yeah. load hollow points, a variety of ammunition in both, in all, like I said, nine, 38 Super Auto or 40 cal. Okay. And these are available with uh, optics cuts, uh, accessory rail cuts, whatever you're looking for, looking to do, we can do that for you. Okay, all right, so it doesn't have to come in this configuration. You could have it for your favorite cut. Yep, we um, also offer custom Cerakoting colors. We offer, obviously, the black, and the FDE, yes, sir. Uh, but we do custom colors as well. If somebody wanted uh, a multi-tone, duo-tone, and uh, we also have a, it's essentially a DLC, but it, it mimics Damascus, Okay. which is uh, another option that we offer. Now, starting price is about 4,500 from what I understand. Yep. And I guess when you go into the open without the, without the, the dot on here, you're looking at about 52. Uh, 5,080, so about 5,100, and okay. that's going to come just as you see it, minus the red dot itself. Got it. But it'll still come with the optic rail. It'll come with the gas pedal there, the thumb rest. Charger, everything. The ambidextrous swappable charging handle, and the integrated flared magwell on the grip. Uh, so, guys, if you pay attention to this, you'll see that the magwell is what it is. I mean, it's integrated into the actual grip itself. It's not a separate piece. You're not getting into that rattling or that movement. Yep. But, uh, Jeff, no, great job. I think this, that kind of covers the big highlights that I wanted to cover with Caracol. Absolutely. And uh, we will go on to the next one, guys. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much.